Hi, I'm Carl. I'd like to talk to you about the Trump situation. This is unprepared, as many of my videos are. I could sit down at my desk. I have the internet, I have plenty of books, I have plenty of time, I have the resources, and I could compose a very complex and analytical viewpoint regarding Trump's impeachment. But I want to speak to you from the heart. So I'm not going to cover all bases here. I'm going to tell you how I feel. But first I want you to know that I'm a fair-minded thinker. Any of you who out of the blocks assume that I'm a liberal who thinks that we have to get rid of Trump no matter who he is or what he does, then you're wrong. I tried to give Trump a chance from 2016. I'm not saying that I thought he would be a good president. It's a foregone conclusion that if you take a man from a strictly business background who changes his political stripes to get elected, you're not going to believe or think that he can be a fair president. But I gave him a chance insofar as wanting to hear what he had to say. So I was one of the first and only people on Facebook, probably, who wasn't a conservative, who voted against Trump, but who called people out for changing some of the things that he said. I'm not going to get into when and where and what I'm talking about, but I didn't like how the media made mistakes and perhaps deliberately misrepresented some of the things that he said, which were already egregious. Let's make that clear. He doesn't talk like an intelligent person, okay? And that doesn't mean he has to be a bad person, but that's strike number one. He said bad things, but he didn't say, in my opinion, what people thought he had said. So I made that case, okay? So bear in mind now that I'm a fair thinker. Fast forward to today. As I said, I'm not going to cover all bases. Recently, the Dershowitz excuse for what Trump did in regard to Ukraine was that Trump did it with the nation's best interest at heart. And so what's good for Trump is good for the nation if he's running for office. I thought of that two months ago, but I didn't think of it as an excuse. As I said, I'm a fair thinker. And so I was trying to imagine Trump in this phone call and I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. But still I came to the conclusion that you don't break the law. So my first strike against him was, or his first strike in my view, is he doesn't speak like an intelligent person. In fact, he speaks in a very insulting way to a lot of people. Right there, to me, that disqualifies a person from being eligible from the office of the White House. But we're not here to debate that. I'm looking at the impeachment. So, what Trump did was he withheld military aid. And for you conservatives, it's not the issue that the aid was released later. That's a childish response. The issue is at the point of the problem. You have to think like a scientist if you want to be fair. If you want to understand combustion, you have to think about the exact moment that the flame begins. You have to think about the oxidation, okay? So at the exact moment that Trump was telling President Zelensky of Ukraine, I want you to do us a favor, that's what we're talking about. Why did he do it? And I thought of this two months ago as a possible defense that what's good for Trump is good for the country because, as every candidate thinks, my agenda is good for the country. But you still don't do it. You see, that's the conclusion you have to come to. You don't break small laws if you're a very virtuous person. But if you're the president, you can't break huge laws. Okay, and I know that you're probably thinking, because I am now, about when we order killings in the world via our army or via the CIA or via operatives who work for the CIA. And so you're thinking, well, if we can do that, we can ask a president to run an investigation. It's not the same thing. War is like when you pick up a bat to hit a guy who comes into your liquor store with a gun. We're irrational at those times. We are desperate at those times. The gloves come off, as they say in the movies. This was a peacetime phone call 
dealing with a president who is at war with a hostile government. I won't get into the whole Russia thing. That's a disgrace already. We're talking about the Zelensky phone call. I don't buy it, and I don't think you buy it, that Trump did that because he thought that we needed an investigation of Trump's rival to make sure that Trump gets elected. And don't give me any of this BS that he was doing it because he just wanted to get to the bottom of corruption in Ukraine, because then he wouldn't have removed Yovanovitch. Now, I want to pull off to the side of the road here for a minute and get out, and I don't smoke, but the good metaphor would be to have a cigarette and, and take a break from this for a minute, okay? But I don't smoke because it's a stupid and terrible thing, but that's a good metaphor. You know, when you're driving and you're having a lot of stress and some people get out to stretch their legs and other people get out to have a cigarette. Let's, let's step back now for a minute. I resent that we have to talk about these things. Ever since Trump was elected, we are talking about minutia, small things that most smart, thinking, compassionate, and fair-minded Americans wouldn't even discuss in a high school scenario. You know, who did what? Who did this? Oh, why did he do that terrible? Oh, well, maybe because. This is the same country where some states still put people to death. This is the same country that goes out and bombs another country if they've done something wrong to us. Why all this patience for a president who's breaking the law? So what I'm saying on this break from the road, from the main discussion is, this is ridiculous to me, that we have to talk about elements of morality that should be moral ABCs. Okay, now back to the main thing. He did this thing. If you get pulled over by a police officer and you give him some ridiculous excuse for why you were speeding, you're getting a ticket. Unless he's a corrupt officer and you're a woman in a negligee and you're handing him money. In a fair situation, you're going to pay for the infraction. If you park in the wrong place, if you don't pay your taxes, okay? So the president did this thing. It doesn't matter that his intentions were good. And Dershowitz is wrong. We can't have a president who puts himself above the law. Now, for you conservatives, I'm going to say, okay, let's grant him this. I'm just, for the sake of example, going to say he did this for the good of the country. I don't believe it. I don't think it's true. I think it defies reason and sense and who he is. That's the main thing. When a person says or does something, you look at who the person is and you measure that action against his or her body of behavior. Nobody believes he did this just for the country, especially with what's going on, how he has, stands a good chance of going to jail if he doesn't, isn't reelected, okay? But I'm going to give it to you for your argument. He did this for the good of the country. He bribed another president and it was a quid pro quo. Unlike what he would have stupid people believe, it's not a quid pro quo because he didn't say quid pro quo. How infantile do you have to be to believe that, okay? But he did this thing. We agree, right? You, th you know he did it. We know he did it. But you're saying he did it because it was for the good of the country. I'm going to grant you that. Now, granted, then why stop witnesses who know the phone call, who know the situation in Ukraine, who know his behavior, who know the law, who know our foreign policy, why stop them from honoring subpoenas? And after that, why not have witnesses at what was supposed to be an impeachment trial? No more discussion. You know what the answer is to this. He broke the law. I'm granting you he did it for the country, but he broke the law. He also did it for himself. He withheld aid to an ally who was fighting the last country in the world who annexes territory through warfare. This was outlawed. And Russia's the last country to do it. As I said, I won't get into the whole Russia thing, okay? Prior to this situation, okay? I'm just agreeing with you for the sake of argument that he did it for the country. But then why did he defy Congress, obstruct justice, 
and put his administration and his people in contempt of Congress. That's impeachable. And that requires removal. Why are people such as myself on about this, as the Brits say? Why am I upset about it? And I'll tell you why. Because of something I had thought about every day since this whole fiasco began. Every day since he started rolling back our environmental policies. Every day since he started rolling back our sanctified territory, letting people drill in parks and hunt endangered species in parks. Ever since he started to roll back all the progress that we have made in protecting our country, protecting our rights, protecting our health, protecting our environment, and protecting our treaties with other countries, this is something I thought about every day during his administration, even before I moved to Japan. Our family members fought in wars to protect our country. Our forefathers built the country on certain principles. Our parents and we ourselves and our friends and relatives, they work hard and pay taxes to build our country. And what did he do? He has been lying since he took office. He has not staffed all the departments of the government. He has weakened our government. He has fired person after person to solidify his power and reduce the balance of power. And the most egregious in that department is the defying of subpoenas, which lowers the legislature below the executive, thereby unbalancing the three co-equal branches of government, which ensure our democracy. And you Republicans want to say it doesn't matter. And what do I think of? I think of what I said I thought of since he was elected, that people fought and died and worked hard and paid taxes to build our country, and he's taking it apart brick by brick. And that is spitting on the people who built our country. When he fired James Comey, he was saying, I don't care what the national security infrastructure says. When he said that he trusted Russia over our national security infrastructure and our people, he was saying, I'm listening to a foreign power instead of the American people. And it's okay with you. And you're putting him on a course to be president again. He put a man on the Supreme Court who thinks that the president should have supreme executive power. His attorney general believes in originalist thinking regarding the Constitution and thinks that the Constitution should be imbued with Christian values in a country that built itself on the idea that we separate church and state. His people are now furthering ideas about changing the relationship between church and state. They want us to pay taxes which pay for the churches. The First Amendment makes this illegal. He is undoing the very principles which made us a great democracy. And it's going to trickle down to you and me. And you don't care. That's what I don't understand about some of you Americans. His people are kingmakers. Gorsuch on the court believes in supreme power of the executive. If you haven't figured out what I'm talking about now, it's the M word, monarchy. Or if you think that's too extreme, oh, we'll never have a king in America, constitutional monarchy. He is solidifying and usurping power, taking it away from the three branches of government, the three branches which are necessary to share power so one branch doesn't become more powerful than another. Once that happens, you no longer have not just in lawmaking, as we already have. A plutocracy. You no longer have a democracy because the structure has been taken apart, piece by piece. Americans, you need to wake up. Yesterday, my father was at the laundromat, and the woman who runs the laundromat, a woman from El Salvador, said to my father, what's wrong with Americans? Are they stupid? Do they not see what happened in other countries? Well, I'll close this narrative by telling you this. I have a student who writes essays each week for me to check. It's a diary to build her English voice. Yesterday she wrote 
a narrative about how the Japanese government flew people from Wuhan province exposed to the coronavirus back to Japan. In Japan, they gave them the option to be examined for the coronavirus or not. And then they put the people who were exposed to the coronavirus in hotels with people who perhaps weren't carrying the coronavirus. And my student was upset. She said, this is so stupid. Why did they do such a foolish thing? And I said, why do you think they did such a foolish thing? She said, I think the Japanese people are too comfortable in their peaceful lives. Basically, she was saying, we don't think anymore. And that is what's wrong with Americans. You can't see the handwriting on the wall. You didn't listen to Professor Snyder. You didn't listen to any of the pundits or politicians or the PhDs, the people who are at the hearing, people who are experts in constitutional law, in American history, in European history. You didn't listen to them. If you can't see it, if your grandparents didn't fight in any wars, if you don't remember the founding of our country and the American Revolution, listen to people who can see the handwriting on the wall. If this man is elected again because your Republican senators allowed an impeachment trial without witnesses, which makes it not a trial. If you allow this man to be elected again, you will see the crumbling of the American Republic. Think about that and think about what it means to you and what it means to the rest of the world. I feel like I'm living in a surrealistic nightmare. Never in my wildest dreams as a child did I imagine that the foundation upon which our lives were built would be taken apart brick by brick. I couldn't even imagine it. We were the ones in the world doing wrong things sometimes, but always with the light of good vision ahead of us, thinking we were doing the right thing. Now it is so plain that we will not be able to do the right thing anymore because we will not have the right situation for ourselves. This president had admired Xi Jinping when he dissolved term limits. This president admires other dictators. Now, as I said, I'm a fair thinker. So even I thought that was window dressing. But now it's no longer talk. It's happening. Call it what you want. Call it a monarch, a constitutional monarch, a king, a supremely powerful president. The executive branch is assuming authority over our entire government and you're letting it happen. Thank you for listening. Save the Republic.